All right, today's lesson is going to be adding and subtracting rational expressions. Kind of similarly to yesterday, we're going to be using some of the same things to get our answer. But we will start other things in the next few minutes to add and subtract. First, let me just restate that you can get the domain system the same way you did it in the integrated system. I said in the denominator, we did a zero, solving the And if it's multiple choice, you can also multiply things by the base of the index and it's going to be the same as well. So with that being said, let's go through some of the problems you see on here and I'll take kind of that hybrid approach that we did yesterday where I sort of use the domain tables and um, work them out by hand. So you have some options for that. Let's start with uh, example one. You want to add and subtract fractions. The first thing you want to do is define a common denominator. And I'm going to backtrack just a little bit. Our restricted dollars are easier to get, so let's get rid of that. So the first thing you want to do is to do um, x to not equal 3. X to not equal six, negative six, because it's what you would put in each side plus times t equal to zero. And what you get when you set x plus six equal to zero. Remember, restrictions are your the numbers that you can't plug in. So basically your not your domain is all real numbers. Except three and negative six. So maybe I'll say negative six first. And three seconds. So take care of those domain restrictions first. I promise you there's going to be a reason why we do that in the end. But for right now, um, once you have that, you know, as far as adding and subtracting or adding, we want to look for a common denominator. I'm going to rewrite this problem on a separate sheet of paper to show you that work a little bit more cleanly, okay? All right, so here I have this problem on a separate sheet of paper. You might want to do the same thing. Um, I can't just say 2 plus 3 and, and x plus x minus 3 plus x plus 6. One half plus let's say 3. There's some work you got to do to do that by hand. You know, you have to you have to think about all right, you know, what denominator can these both go into, and what of two will give you um, a number that three times some other number can go into. So you got to look at it like you're putting you're stealing other denominators. So like if this raised, this has to be included in the denominator down here to make that six. And then with this raise, I still have to make that and make that six. When I write it next to those fractions, I have to copy it from the numerator to the exponent. Because three divided by three is one, so that makes that equivalent. One times one half doesn't change the fact that that's one half. But what that's going to do is that's going to multiply, and that's going to give you three over six. And the same thing applies to the two thirds and two. You know. 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6, 4 6 is equivalent to 2 thirds, but now that I have the same denominator, I can add the numerators and put that over 6. So 3 6 plus 4 6 is going to be 7 6. And that's a simplified fraction, 7 over 6. Sometimes we have to, you know, reduce it, but 7 doesn't divide 6 evenly, so that would be your answer. So now let's apply that to a problem with variables. What we'll do is we'll write it again. This time, let's put our, our denominators in parentheses. And let's leave a little bit of space. Because we're going to be throwing things next to all the numerators and denominators. We're going to steal 
for the x minus 3. I'm going to steal this x plus 6. And we're going to bring it over here. And we're going to write that next to the x minus 2. Now, I've, I've stolen that from over here. And likewise, I'm going to steal this x minus 3. And I'm going to write it next to the x plus 6. So now that I have the same two denominators on the on the same two factors on the denominator, they're the same thing because when I multiply, it doesn't matter what order I multiply them in. I can't steal without borrowing and putting it on the numerator. So if I'm stealing an x plus 6 here, I have to also copy that above it. And the same thing with the x minus 3. And that's the same, that, you know, that's what I was doing with this 3 here and that 2. I was copying those above it. Now, uh, you know, I've made something that, to me, looks even more complicated. But what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to rewrite it as 2 parentheses x plus 6 over x minus 3 x plus 6. And 3 parentheses x minus 3 over x plus 6, x minus 3. Those are the same denominators. And I want to distribute those into those, fract those factors. So that's going to be 2x plus 12 This is going to be 3x minus 9. Again, this is addition, so I'm going to rewrite my denominator. And at this point, I can add the numerators together and combine like terms. So if I add those together, I'm going to be left with 2x plus 3x, 2x plus 3x, that's going to be 5x, and then 12 minus 9, that's going to be 3, so 5x plus 3. Now I've added my numerators, I only write my denominator once, so I can just write the x minus 3, x plus 6 one time. Um, we look at the, the final result, you know, 5x plus 3, I can't factor anything out of that, so that is going to be my final answer. And I'm just going to box that in and circle that. Now, before I move on, I'll show you, you know, once again, like I was doing for the previous lesson, how I do check the answer choices in Desmos. And like the previous lesson with multiplication and division, you can do that technique from the start if you have multiple choice answers. Okay, just a word of to the wise when inputting in an expression, put the entire expression in. What I like to do is I do the division part for the first fraction, and then I go over and I put plus. I do whatever operation is in between them, and then I hit another division bar. And that way that, I, that allows me to input all the numerators and denominators separately. So I'll put the 2 there, x minus 3. and plus the 3 over the x plus 6. And again, we're going to get some weird graphs, so we'll just kind of roll with that. I'm going to pause the video again and get the rest of the answer choices in. And I would advise you to do the same so you can kind of check with me as we go. Make sure you can type these in. If you're able to use your Chromebook to type in to Desmos, it's a little bit faster. All right, I have uh, a answer choice A, B, C, and D entered in. And, you know, I got my answer by hand. And remember, my answer was 5x plus 3 over x minus 3x plus 6, which is going to be this first one here. And it doesn't matter that the x plus 6 is first. It should be answer choice A. So if we match up, if I click on that, that overlaps the graph. So that's my answer. You can see with the other ones, that one's off. That one's off, 
and so is that. So there's only ever going to be one that's equivalent, and in this case, it's going to be this one here. So if you're if you got faced with answer choices, that's not for you to do. Try number two by yourself, and I'll check the answers. Um, pause the video so you can try it, and unpause it when you're ready to check the answers, and I'll have them available for you. Okay. I have my restrictions in my domain. My restrictions, my denominators don't factor, so x minus 1 will just get set equal to 0, and that'll give you 1, and x plus 5 will get set equal to 0, and that'll give you negative 5. So my domain is all real numbers except those two values, negative 5 and positive 1. Okay, I'm first going to check our answer uh, using Desmos. So I have my original typed in, and I have hidden all the other answer choices. So A, B, C, and D are plugged in. And let me try to display one at a time. The first answer choice gives me a different graph, as you can see, so I'll turn that off. The second answer choice also gives me a different graph. It's a little bit closer, but it's still off. Anytime you're given a number as an answer choice, it's not going to graph unless you put Y equals that. So make sure you do Y equals, otherwise it's just going to give you a number down below. That's a flat line, so that's not going to work. So it's going to have to be B. And it looks like I made a mistake somewhere. Ah, my mistake is right from the beginning. I put a plus in there instead of a minus. So let's fix that real quick. So let's check those one more time. A doesn't work. B close, sees that flat line, and hmm. ah, there it is. So, yeah, that overlaps it, so it's going to be answer choice B. Now I'm going to pause it and show you the work. Okay, I rewrote it and have the steal copy technique where I'm stealing that denominator and stealing that one and copying both of them on, on the numerator. All right, next step is going to be the numerator is worked out. Okay, you can see here that I distributed the 10 into the x plus 5 to get 10x plus 50, and I distributed the 3 into the x minus 1 to get 3x minus 3. Be careful with that negative sign as we go to the next step. With addition, it's a lot uh, just of combining like terms, but in this case, you know, since I'm sub subtracting, that 3x will get subtracted, but because I have a minus 3, that's going to end up being addition. So careful with that minus sign. That should be a minus and a plus when I combine like terms. So my final answer up here, I combine like terms to be 10x uh, minus 3x, so that's going to be 7x, 10x minus 3x. So then I have 50 minus negative 3, which is plus 3, so plus 53. And we write that over our denominator, x minus 1 and x plus 5. And that matched up our answer choice. Remember, answer choice D was the right answer, and that gave me the graph that overlapped it. So there is your simplified answer using subtraction. Be careful with minus signs with subtraction, but otherwise it's the same thing. We're not flipping anything like we did with division. Uh, let's try example three together. We want to start with our restrictions. With the x minus one, that's pretty straightforward. We just got to... So with uh, x minus one equals zero, that zero is just one. I mean, you can still get the zero in the graph if you want, and the x value where it crosses the x plus. Um, with the other denominator, we can get those two zeros. Let me zoom in a little bit. And it should be both positive 1 and 2. And let's refresh on why those are the answers. So x cannot be 1 or 2. And we don't need to repeat our restrictions. So we can just say x cannot equal 1 or 2. So our domain is all real numbers except 
1, and 2. And I was going to explain this part. This is just from factoring. If you factor x squared minus x plus 2, you're going to get two expressions. Um, it's going to be x minus 1 and x minus 2. And if you set both of those equal to 0, you're going to get positive 1 and positive 2. Hopefully you can see the factors. Negative 1 and negative 2 multiply to give you positive 2, but they add to give you negative 3. Okay, hopefully you can um, input the original expression in and match your answer choices. If you would like to pause the video and try that and just ver verify you can get the same graph as I have, and then we can go down the line and get our answer choices. So um, take a second to do that, then you can unpause the video. I'm about to display each one of these. So answer choice A gives me a different graph. B, nothing happened. So it looks like it's hard to tell because it's black and it's green, but um, on your screen, if you have these two graphs, this did uh, appear to be green overlapping that. So that's going to be answer B. C gives me a different graph, and likewise, B does as well. You can see that matches over there. So it's going to be answer choice B, x plus 1 over x minus 2. Now I'm going to rewrite it out so you can pause the video and try to rewrite it. Okay, what you want to do on this problem is, this is example three, is you want to factor whatever denominators aren't already factored. So I, I went ahead and did that with the right side. Since x minus 1 can't be factored, but x squared minus 3x plus 2 can factor to x minus 1 and x minus 2. And again, these two numbers multiply to 2 and add to negative 3. So what we have is we have this denominator contains some of this denominator, and this denominator contains all of this denominator. So for, for the x minus 1, in order for me to match up the denominator, I'm going to have to steal the x minus 2. Now, over on the right side, I already have the x minus 1. And I already had the x minus 2 that I stole and brought over here, and I copied on the numerator for it. I don't have anything I need to steal. I already have matching denominators. So we've already taken care of that part. All right, so our next step is going to be to distribute and combine like terms on the numerator. Pause the video and try that, and then you can check my work. Okay, so you can see that I just had to distribute the x. Since I didn't have anything I stole up there, my numerator is going to be stuck with 2x minus 1. Now I'm going to combine like terms. So I'll get those from the numerator. I have an x squared. Uh, I don't have any other x squared, so it's just going to be x squared. I have a minus 2x and a positive. This is a plus, so a positive 2x. Well, those will cancel out. So those are going to give me nothing. Then I'm left with minus 1. So those numerators will combine to x squared minus 1. And that's going to be put over x minus 1, x minus 2. We write that one time. Now this one, we got to take one step further. This is factorable, x squared minus 1. But that's a difference of squares again. So we're going to factor this. And x squared minus 1 will factor to x plus 1 and x minus 1. So this is kind of combining some elements that we did yesterday with multiplication and division. So we're going to rewrite that as x plus 1, x minus 1. And we're going to put that over our denominator, x minus 1 and x minus 2. Now what we have left there's going to be a factor on the numerator and the denominator that cancel out. Those x minus 1s are going to go away. So what we're left with is x plus 1 over x minus 2. And that should match our answer choice. So if you remember, our answer was b, x plus 1 over x minus 2. That produced the same graph. 
here is the work to get toward that graph. If you would try a letter uh, in example four on your own, and I'll have the work displayed so you can check it. Okay, we're going to start with the restriction. Set your denominator is equal to zero. X minus one will be your restriction of positive one. X squared minus X equals the first zero, so it does cancel. We're going to get the PCF out, which is going to be X. Both of those factors get set equal to zero, so x cannot be zero from the x and one from the x minus one. So I have a repeated restriction. I obviously write that one term here. My, my domain is all real numbers except for zero and one. Okay, pause the video again and try working it out, and then you can get um, my answer. All right, your first step for these problems is to always factor what you have in the denominator. After that, you want to steal and copy on the numerator. Again, we only have to steal something from over here since this already had the x minus 1. We want to next distribute the x into the x plus 1, so we'll get x squared plus x. Then we'll combine like terms on the numerator. x squared, x, and minus 2, none of them have like terms, so it's going to be x squared plus x minus 2. And we write it over our denom denominator, x, x minus 1. We write the denominator one time. After we combine the numerators, we're going to factor that numerator. Look at that last number and find two numbers that multiply to negative 2, 2 and negative 1. That also add to the 1, give you that middle term 1x. And in this case, it's going to be x plus 2 and x minus 1. You can rewrite that, and you can cancel out the x minus 1s from the numerator and the denominator. And what you're left with in this case is x plus 2 over x. So my final answer will be x plus 2 on the numerator and x on the denominator. And if you want to put that in parentheses, you can. It doesn't matter. Um, that's going to correspond to answer choice B. And I'm not going to put this one in the graph, but you certainly are welcome to do so. Um, but you have that answer on there, x plus 2 over x, so that lines up. And just to kind of recap on these, that, you know, I've showed you all the hand methods to do that. Uh, as far as getting the restrictions and um, if it's multiple choice, as far as getting the answers from Desmos, you're going to do the same thing you did with multiplication and division if you're going to choose the calculator route. All right, so on the back side, you're going to have some practice problems, which will be on Canvas for you to submit your answers as well. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something.